Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Mushroom Lab. I got another Cordyceps Militaris video for you guys today. So in my first Militaris video, I showed you the rice cooker tech and I'm still using that method. It works great uh, in terms of production. If you're actually trying to grow and sell, it's a really good method because it's a good way to uh, get a lot of substrate going with minimal effort. But some people really struggle with that, with contamination, with the rice cooker tech method. So I'm going to show you a different method you can use today. Essentially, uh, we're going to be making up some rice based substrates and we're going to be actually cooking them in the pressure cooker and sterilizing them that way. And uh, I'm using some, I got some new containers. Uh, these are from Root Mushroom Farm. And these are specifically designed to be cordyceps grow containers or like a little screw top grow jar. Uh, these are plastic, but they're PP5 plastic and they're nice and thick, so they'll do fine in the pressure cooker. And they come with a little uh, filter disc on them here. And uh, I added the injection port. I just drilled a quarter inch hole and added an injection port. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some rice and some broth to this jar. We're going to do about 1 to 1.2, so one part rice to 1.2 parts broth. And the first time I tried this, I did a higher ratio of broth and they turned out way too wet and I didn't have success with it. So we're going to try 1 to 1.2 this time, see if we can get a little drier cakes and see how they work out. Um, we're going to be using two different broth recipes, uh, just regular brown rice for both. First recipe we're gonna do is actually an egg-based recipe that was developed by uh, Jeff Manganaro of Appalachian Gold on Etsy. And the other broth, we're gonna use this exact same broth I used in my first rice cooker tech Cordyceps Militaris video. So if you guys are interested in that, I'm gonna show it, uh, go over it pretty quickly here. If you wanna see it in more detail, check out my rice cooker tech video. This will be kind of interesting. I'm testing out a new grow container and we're going to do two different broth recipes so we can kind of compare and contrast uh, which ones work best. But I'm really excited to try out this, uh, this egg based recipe because it sounds pretty cool. We have our blender here. This is the uh, original, man, I don't even know. This might be 1970s Osterizer here, still, still running strong. But uh, the egg based broth is just three eggs and we have a tablespoon of nutritional yeast and a tablespoon of dextrose in here and that's it and we're going to add everything into the blender the eggs are going in shells and all and uh, we're going to top it up to about 500 mils in the blender with distilled water and uh, that is it we're just going to blend it up and that's going to be our first batch of broth and for rice i'm just rocking the Goya brown rice. Drop our eggs in here. Pour our dry ingredients in there. The uh, nutritional yeast, I got that in like the, I guess the organic or the vegan section of my local supermarket. That was fairly easy to find. And uh, yeah, we just got to top this off to... Getting about 500 milliliters there or so. Cap on. And let's see here. What do we want to do to this? Um, let's try puree. How about that? pretty good let's just let that settle out for a little bit while we make up our other broth and uh, if there's any foam on top at the end i'll just scoop it off before we pour it onto our rice you can see it's only been a couple minutes and the uh, egg broth is already starting to settle out and that foam's kind of dying off so we're going to mix up our second nutrient broth here and i just mixed up all our dry ingredients on my gram scale this is 15 grams dextrose 1.5 grams soy peptone, 1 gram monopotassium phosphate, 
half a gram of magnesium sulfate, which is just uh, Epsom salts, and half a gram of ammonium citrate. And this is just going into 500 mils of distilled water. This is the exact recipe that we usually use for our rice cooker tech. So if you want to uh, check that video out, I go over the recipe in more detail there. So I'm just going to get a spoon here. We'll mix this up and we'll start filling our jars. We have 12 jars total here and we have 30 grams of brown rice weighed up into each jar. And so we're going to do six and six with our two different nutrient broths. And uh, the cool thing with these jars too and this setup is that uh, you don't have to have a flow hood. Once these come out of the PC, you know, you're never opening the lid. We're just going to inject a couple few cc's of liquid culture right through the injection port right there. And that'll be it. So that's a that's a bonus if you're just starting out or you want to play with this and uh, you don't have a flow hood so you can do uh, liquid culture with fairly good success just in a uh, clean room or if you have a still air box you could use that as well so like i said we're going to do a 1 to 1.2 rice to broth ratio so i have 30 grams of rice in each jar we're going to go with 36 mils of nutrient broth into each one six and six and then we're going to cap them off, put the uh, tin foil battle helmets on them so the aliens can't read their thoughts while they're in the pressure cooker. And we will, we're going to run them for about 60 minutes at 15 PSI. And then we're going to have to obviously let them cool down for a while. And then we'll shoot them up with LC. So we got the broth in there. And you can see the difference between the two. Obviously, the closer one is the egg. Uh, we got the screw caps on and our tin foil helmets there. So these are ready to pack in the PC. I'm not going to label them at this point because I don't think I'm going to have any issue telling which one's which after I pull them out of the PC. So I'll probably uh, label them up after inoculation. Let's show you how I pack the PC here. We have our Peptone broth jars on the bottom and a layer of six. Layer of six egg jars on top, so it'll be easy to keep track of them that way too. So we're gonna kick the heat on. We got the old 23 quart Presto here running on the 1300 watt Wearing Pro side burner as always. So we're gonna lit it up, turn the heat on, and get it up to 15 psi. Once you reach 15 psi, we'll set our timer for 60 minutes. It's Cordyceps cake update time. We're at exactly one week after inoculation here. Over on this side, we have our six uh, cakes with the egg-based substrate. And over on that side, we have the supplement broth-based cakes. And you can see the egg cakes are quite a bit ahead of the, uh, the supplement cakes over here. I'll pick a couple up and take a look here. So we got a lot of colonization across the top. And it's also starting to colonize the sides and the bottom as well. Um, this is how most of the egg-based cakes are looking. And uh, I put them, I only left them for like a day in the dark. Uh, and then I put them right under the lights. So they've been under the lights for six days. Here's the rice mixed with our uh, supplement broth. And you can see not... Quite, it's kind of hard to see with the condensation, but not quite as colonized on top. Still starting to uh, colonize the sides and the bottom there. Uh, these almost seem like they're starting to catch up a little bit. Uh, the egg definitely jumped off faster, but a little slower. I would say they're still maybe a day or two behind the egg base cakes. So, but these have only been going for a week, and uh, we're just going to leave them in the container. And uh, hopefully they'll get nice and orange like our, uh, I'm leaving them next to our rice cooker tech tubs here because these are looking beautiful. You guys can see all those little primordia forming. And uh, these are about exactly a month after inoculation, about 30 days. So uh, those are looking awesome. And so I'm leaving our, uh, leaving our cakes right next to them for inspiration hopefully they'll try and be like their big brothers and sisters there so uh well, actually it's their clone really if you want to be technical about it but uh yeah we're just gonna leave these in um in our container and let them keep colonizing and hopefully uh in another 
few weeks they'll look just as good as those uh, rice cooker cakes are looking over there. Today is March 4th and it's time for another cake update. Our egg sub cakes have been fully colonized for a while. That's them over here and they're starting to take on a nice orangey color and I'm hoping in a week or so at about the four week mark we're gonna get some pinning. I think they're getting close and our rice nutrient broth cakes over here are still a little behind they are fully colonized now i'm not seeing the orange hue to them um everything's nice and fully colonized though except for this one that one rice kernel stuck to the side of the jar up there so i don't know what's gonna happen with that but he's just chilling up there we'll let him chill but anyway, those are fully colonized as well, but uh, camera doesn't always pick it up, but they're not taking on that nice orange hue like the egg sub cakes are yet. Hey, what's up, buddy? Did you come down to help out? <laughs> you just want dinner, don't you? But anyway, uh, I'm hoping in about a week we'll have some pinning on those egg cakes, but uh, we'll just keep an eye on them. They're still under the lights, 12 hours on, with our 6,500K fluorescent banks here. And we'll come back when we get some pins. We are at exactly one month after inoculation. And we're getting some pins on our cakes. Looking great. I want to show you uh, the egg cakes pin first. Uh, pull one of these out here. And you can see, see all those nice little military pins starting? Oh, they're mostly along the edge. There's some in the middle as well. Um, when these get close to pinning, you start seeing these like little bright orange dots appearing on the substrate. And usually once that happens, like those are basically primordia. So your pins start from there. And uh, let's show you the other cakes here. These are, you know, they've been behind the whole time. So they still are, although they, they did fully colonize. See that nice bright orange color developing on the edge of the substrate there, that's what I'm talking about. These are about a week behind, um, but I think these will pin very soon as well. So the uh, broth, nutrient broth cakes, the whole time they've been about a week behind. Um, and, you know, that could be different. Maybe if I had used a different volume of liquid culture, but all in all, the uh, egg-based substrate has been ahead the whole time. Show you another cake here. Same thing, getting some nice primordia pins starting to pop up there. And so I'm hoping these will kind of fill in across the top surface too. I'm sure they will. The humidity is still looking okay in these uh, jars. You know, still got a little bit of condensation on the walls and that's usually what you want to see. You know, you don't want any standing water, but you do want to see that little bit of condensation like you see right there. So... Everything seems good. I think our moisture balance and our substrate was okay. So I'm just gonna cover them back up and we'll come back when uh, hopefully these cakes are nice and covered in, in pins. So we're about a month in from inoculation. Typically harvest is usually around two months. So we're about halfway there. It is picking time for our cordyceps cakes. And uh, I think I'm actually gonna pick all of them off. This is one of our egg substrate cakes. Oh, uh, you can see those fruit bodies are just covered in parathesia. So they're looking nice. Um, the culture that I used to start these, again, this was the uh, MMX3 strain from Gary at Fresh Fungi. And I'll show you the, we'll do a comparison here between the two substrate recipes. These are our egg cakes over here. And those are our nutrient broth cakes over there. And a little different morphology actually between the two substrates um got some chunkier fatter but a little more abnormally shaped fruits off the uh, egg substrate and they were a little faster and i'd say they're probably still a little ahead of our nutrient broth recipe cakes um let's see here this is one of them you can see a little still covered in parathesia not really fat fruit bodies though, but uh, definitely more normally shaped and a little better coverage 
across the cake. So a little bit of a difference. I'll be interested to see if the yield is at all different. Um, we did get all 12 cakes to successful fruition here. And so what I'm going to do now is just uh, pick them off and I'll just compare the yield uh, between the two substrates. And our containers performed pretty well. Uh, they kept the contamination out. We didn't have any contamination issues. And so I guess I'd give them a thumbs up at this point. Uh, my one question is uh, how well they'll hold up over time running through the pressure cooker, but we'll see as far as that goes. Um, but for now, they seem to do pretty well. Uh, the air exchange seemed okay. And, uh, you know, I have seen grows this nice or even better just in regular canning jars with just uh, some polyfill stuffed in the lid. So I'm not sure it's worth the extra money to buy these versus just using simple canning jars with just a hole, you know, some holes poked in the lid or a single hole with just some polyfill in it or some micropore tape over it or whatever. But uh, I did get a successful grow here. So um, these are kind of cool. Again, they came with the filter disc. I just drilled a hole and added the injection port. It's pretty easy to do, just a self-adhesive injection port for Micropose. So the way I picked these is pretty simple. Uh, I'll show you how to get them out of the jar without damaging any fruit bodies. Uh, what I lay them out on are these uh, pieces of, this is eggshell crate drop ceiling tile, basically, that I cut up into pieces. You can get this at any big box store. And uh, it comes in sheets, and you can cut it up pretty easy. It's just a nice plastic, um, basically like shelving material. Pretty inexpensive, and it works great for sitting your cakes out on when you're picking them. So basically, we're just going to uh, pop our cap off here. Then I just have a bamboo shish kebab skewer. And we're just going to stick that right down into the middle of the cake. And then just pop it loose, pull it out, and set it on our screen. That's it. Once you get them all laid out on there, it's uh, easy picking. Got all the cakes popped out. Got a close-up comparison of the two different recipes. Uh, nutrient broth over here. Nice, normally shaped, little thinner fruit bodies. Really nice parathesia formation. And over here is our egg substrate. Little chunkier fruit bodies. Not as uh, symmetrical. Beautiful, real thick parathesia formation. So for our standard nutrient broth cakes, we ended up with just over one and a half ounces. 1.56 ounces. So got them all picked off. You can see when I pick them, you know, I just pick them, basically twist them off with my fingers, don't do any cutting or anything. They do tear pretty cleanly from the uh, substrate surface. You can see there's not much left there. So we'll see how our egg substrate stacks up. And our egg base cakes yield exactly 1.5 ounces. So the standard nutrient broth cakes are officially the winner, but not by much. Uh, really, really similar yield, actually. And uh, both produce nice fruit bodies. Um, if you're looking for fatter fruit bodies, which is kind of a uh, advantage in terms of if you want to dry and sell these, uh, the egg substrate definitely did produce fatter fruit bodies with a similar, if not slightly less yield. Another advantage of the egg recipe is how simple it is. Uh, really easy to mix up, less ingredients than our standard nutrient broth recipe. So uh, yeah, interesting, interesting grow here. Uh, you can see with the cakes, it's a lot less yield um, than my bigger rice cooker tech cakes. So if you're just looking to make some tea or tincture or extract for yourself, uh, this is a nice, nice way to do a grow, especially if you're struggling with contamination doing the rice cooker tech, which I know just from speaking to people, uh, some people do struggle with that. So this is another alternative. Interesting grow. Gave you guys a couple different examples of substrates. So shout out to Jeff Maginaro, 
of Appalachian Gold for uh, coming up with this egg substrate recipe. Pretty simple, pretty cool. And Cordyceps cultivation is still kind of in its infancy, guys. So I encourage you guys to um, play with different substrate recipes and share your results. But that's going to be the end of this experiment. I'm going to get these in the dehydrator, and I'll catch you next video.